Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is Manx cats are heterozygous for dominant mutations that results in no tails or very short tails, large hind legs and a distinctive gait. The mating of two Manx cats yields two Manx kittens for each normal long-tailed kitten raises than three to one as uh, would be predicted from Mendelian genetics. Therefore the mutation causing the Manx cats phenotype is likely and you have to choose what kind of uh, allele cause this genetic disorder. So, answer A, pleiotrophic, what does it mean? This means that uh, change in one gene or mutation in one gene would result in change of many traits. And, uh, for example, mutation in one gene would change trait uh, 1, trait number 2 and trait number 3 and so on. There are many diseases uh, that caused by dominant allele and that would change many many traits. Example would be dwarfism, uh, even uh, one allele would be enough for the uh, child to be born uh, dwarf and of course, it's not just a short stature, it means a change of many, many traits. Um, so, uh, what another variant of the answer would be co-dominant. Can this uh, be explained by co-dominance? And here I have a picture that would help me to explain. So, we have a trait color here, uh, which can be with a red, white, or pink. So on this picture we see classical example of incomplete dominance. And just a minute later I will explain what is a codominance. So let's imagine that dominant allele would make a red pigment. So genotype of the parent here would be capital A, capital A, and a genotype of the parent that produce white flowers would be small a, small a, and if we cross these two parents, uh, this would result in progeny that is going to be capital A and small a. And if we have incomplete dominance, then uh, phenotype of the F1 progeny would be intermediate between uh, these two colors, so would be pink or pale red. Because how it can be explained? It can be explained that one normal allele is not enough to produce the same quantity of the red pigment. So one would be, uh, one allele would be functional and another one would be non-functional. So here we would have a reduced uh, quantity of the red pigment. So we will perceive it as pale red. And here two alleles would be defective and no uh, red pigment would be produced at all. So this is example of the incomplete dominance. And as I said, picture here on the right demonstrates us uh, what is the co-dominance is. It is when both uh, pigments would be expressed. So we would have uh, patches of pure white and pure pink. So both alleles would be expressed simultaneously. And that means that, for example, genotype of this parent here would be capital A prime and capital A prime. And this would result in F1 progeny that is going to be, if we cross these two parents, that is going to be genotypically capital A and capital A prime. So both alleles would be dominant, so we call the situation co-dominance. Now think. If we would take two parents that uh, would be the same uh, phenotype and the same uh, color, capital A, capital A, and if we cross with another parent that is also going to be capital A, capital A, of course this would result in 100% of the progeny being red. The same is true for this color. So what other variants we may have? What if we cross F1 generation among uh, itself? Or we say uh, self-cross uh, or uh, if it is plants we can say self 
pollinate. So we'll cross capital A, capital A prime with capital A, capital A prime. What phenotypic ratio in F2 generation we are going to get? So let's check. And let's say one parent is capital A, capital A prime. Another parent is also capital A and capital A prime. Let's see what results we may get. So here we would get capital A, capital A, capital A, capital A prime, capital A, capital A prime here, and capital A prime, capital A prime here. So basically, what does it mean? That means that uh, this genotype would result in this phenotype. These two genotypes, which are the same, would result in this phenotype. And capital A prime, capital A prime would result in this phenotype. So we would have ratio as 1 red. Two two uh, red patches and white patches. This is going to be a distinctive phenotype to one uh, genotype that is uh, result in white color in plants. So this is not what we are looking for. We are looking for uh, phenotypic ratio one to two or two to one. So let's now return to the variance of the answer that we have. So we cannot explain with answer A pleiotrophic, we cannot explain with co-dominance. Uh, let's consider epistatic. Epistatic basically means that, for example, we have uh, one pair of chromosomes. So let's say this is chromosome number one. And we have another pair of chromosomes. Say this is chromosome number two. And here we have gene A or locus A and here we have locus B where we can find gene B. And depending on the genotype of this locus B, uh, this locus can control expression of the gene A. For example, if gene A can be whether dominant or recessive, such um, Two alleles can produce three genotypes, capital A, capital A, capital A, small a, and small a, small a. All three of these genotypes we can find in this locus or position. And as for the gene B, if this gene B also would be represented by two alleles, uh, capital B and small b, also, these two alleles can produce and deploy organisms following genotypes capital B, capital B, capital B, small b, and small b, small b. And depending on the genotype of this locus, uh, it basically can be in two positions. Position on, like a switch, and off. For example, these two variants would result in the on position and this genotype small b small b would result in off position. Once again, for example, if this dominant allele would produce red pigment, these two genotypes would produce red pigment, and if this recessive allele would produce white pigment, uh, then uh, this would result in uh, white pigment if two alleles would be uh, recessive. And now let's see what would happen if here we would see homozygous dominant or heterozygous genotype. But gene B would be homozygous recessive. Nevertheless, we wouldn't be able to see expression of this uh, trait in uh, this plant because this, uh, say this can be enzyme and even uh, normal proteins would be produced by these alleles, this enzyme wouldn't convert them into the normal pigment. So we have to have, in order to have uh, red pigment, we have to have 
one of these two genotypes and one of these two genotypes. But if we would see here a recessive genotype, even if a position would be on of the switch, still we wouldn't see pigment uh, produced or even if we would have these two normal genotypes but position uh, of the gene B would be off or no enzyme would be produced still we wouldn't be able to see uh, production of the um, pigment so this is a classical example of epistasis when one gene it can be even on the other chromosome control expression uh, of the other gene or uh, allelic sets. So uh, with epistasis we may have different variants of the ratios of phenotypes. Classical example would be the hybrid cross uh, where we can get 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. Another modification of this ratio would be 9 to 7 ratio or 9 to 4 and to 3. Uh, another variant would be uh, 1 to 4 to 6 to 4 to 1. So as you see uh, all these ratios would produce if we add all these numbers would give us 16. So that's why we put them in the same category and uh, many more different ratios exist when we have two genes uh, that would work together in order to produce certain phenotypes but we do not see 2 to 1 ratio here. So we also can cross out this uh, variant so this is not caused by epistasis. So we have left with two answers, cell and sex linked. Now imagine that this is this condition, this ratio two to one is caused by sex link dominant uh, allele. So let's say that uh, genotype of the father uh, would be defective X chromosome normal Y chromosome and genotype of the mother would be defective X chromosome and normal X chromosome because this is uh, we assume x link dominant genetic disorder uh, both uh, phenotypes of the mother and of the father uh, would be the same and uh, let's assume that this would cause tailless condition in uh, cats. So what we are going to get in the progeny? In the progeny we are going to get following genotypes and phenotypes. Defective X chromosome here from the mother side, defective X chromosome here from the father side, defective X chromosome here from the mother side, normal Y chromosome here from the father side, defective X chromosome from the father side, normal X chromosome from the mother side, and normal X chromosome from the mother side, and normal Y chromosome from the father side. Basically this result in three quarters of the progeny to be uh, tailless. We assume that this cause uh, tailessness in cats, so three quarters and one quarter would have um, tails of the normal size. So this gives us ratio as 3 to 1. Once again this is not 2 to 1 ratio. What if a female, and this is female side as you see, two X chromosomes, this is male side. What if female would have two defective X chromosome? In this case we have to change color here and as you see 100% of the progeny would be tailless. So we cannot explain what we see uh, in a cross of two uh, Manx cats uh, with 2 to 1 ratio of tailless to one cat that has normal length of the tail 
So let's consider the last option. So the last option would be answer D. So uh, what kind of allele we call lethal allele. And imagine now that uh, both parents are heterozygous, so have genotype capital A and small a, capital A and small a. And both uh, these parents, parent 1 and parent 2, would be tailless because of the presence of this dominant allele that caused this condition. So, uh, if we cross these two genotypes, what we can expect in their progeny. Capital A, capital A here, capital A, small a here, capital A, small a here, and small a, small a here. If uh, organism would get two uh, defective lethal alleles, which are very important uh, in normal state uh, for fetus development, uh, and two such defective alleles would cause uh, miscarriages and uh, stillbirths. So basically we wouldn't be able to see this genotype among the litter. So we would see that uh, two out of three of the live births would result in the tailless cats, tailless kittens and one out of three would result in uh, normal, phenotypically normal cats with a normal lens tails. So as you see now we got our 2 to 1 ratio. If we cross two Manx cats we expect in the litter to get a 2 to 1 ratio of the Manx cat to uh, phenotypically normal cats and as you see that's why uh, we cannot say that Manx cats are pure breed because Pure breed always would produce in following generations the same trait, but we see here that uh, trait segregates. And for cat breeders, I have a note: if you uh, would have two cats wo that would pro two manx cats that uh, would produce litter, and if you would take a cat with a normal length tail and would cross with another uh, cat. Um, that has normal length uh, tail, but uh, who would be from the litter of two Manx cats, you would never get Manx phenotype. In order to get uh, more Manx cats, you have to take those cats that has uh, short tails. And even in this case, you should expect this phenotypic ratio in the progeny. And none of the Manx cats would be homozygous dominant. So, as you see, our choice would be answer D. And this is all for today. Thank you for attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.